make them take the big step. Alright? Then we attack. Let's see what you told me. Get our grip. Right here. So what the kids are doing here, the team is doing, Ken's having a specific direction drill where he wants to move them into the direction. So and you can see there, Kyle had a left-hand grip. Was that Kyle? Yeah, Kyle had a left-hand grip on Mark there. And he's moving him to the left into what Kenny calls the direction of his power hand, sets his power hand, his steering hand. And that's exactly what he's doing there to set him up. See the Taisabaki, that's a great example of Taisabaki training. Taisabaki is body movement in a circular fashion. And again, it's controlling your partner's, your opponent's hips as you fit them in. You want to set them up, you set them in. Whatever grip you had, whether it's a lapel grip like we saw here with Mark, or earlier a little more of a back grip over the back grip that Kyle was doing. But there's the uh, idea of the, uh, it's a Taisabaki drill, it's a body movement drill. And again, this is what is essential to teach is body movement. That's what judo, sambo, any of these grappling throws sports are about. Especially when you're throwing and you have to control the opponent's body and control his balance, break his balance. Well, that's where we learn it here through good taisabaki. And again, the uh, basics work, and again, the basics work at all levels. And that's what they're training on, and the taisabaki drill. The idea here is uh, Ken Brink was teaching to step around, always have their hip in position to attack. So pull them into your hip, as we say here, and move them out with that Taisabaki drill. Set them around, and you can fit directly in more easily into your attack. And notice the coaching is hands on. It's what I call uh, coaching by osmosis. It's really not osmosis, it's just bits at a time. It's layers. Ken presents a position he wants them to do or a thing he wants them to do, then adds to it. And he keeps drilling on it. Changing the drills is necessary, but he keeps drilling on it until they get the, get the skill correctly. 
again, we're working on a very important aspect of Tai Sabaki and movement. And that's what, that's what he's having them do here. Set up, and there you go. That's a good example of that. What Kyle did there at the foreground. We room out into the power hand or in the steering hand and attack. Notice, coaches, how the uh, cat coach uh, Brink is moving all around the mat, each group making adjustments as necessary. It's active participation as a coach. Don't just step back and watch them get involved. And that's what coaching is about. You see here, Mark, one of our other coaches, comes over to a group. He's doing it. Andre's working here. So you can see how the other coaches are working in as well. Well, it's all in the same direction. You get the kids the same skill, the athletes on the mat the same skill. In this case, mostly kids, some adults. Sabaki movement, pull around and set up. In this case, they're doing sumi geishi with it. We just come back from our training camp at, uh, with John Saylor, and John is a big advocate of pulling and using Tai Sabaki to pull to his hip, load him up on the hip. And, and you can do a lot of different throws. This this proves that you're doing a, a sumi geishi or corner counter throws by pulling him in. I hopefully get out of range there see pulling in hey and Eric be a little slicker don't don't just yank with your right hand kind of use your elbow and manipulate him you want him to ride your hip okay so then you can pop him in so yeah, I'm working on taking the corner and yeah but, but in doing that you'll, you'll you'll shave that corner by, by doing that yeah almost lull him into it you know, yeah, I'm trying to sharpen yeah. that drag up a little bit. This pole. Your whole thing is there. Now, now be sure, guys, when you do pull them into your hip, be sure your your base leg, in this case, your right leg, for that. It's, it don't don't stick it out too far away. Okay. So you want to, you want to have a good base under there when you shoot your move.
We're working on a circular approach to a Kuriyashi Barai, the sliding foot sweep or send after foot sweep. And uh, this is one of the many applications. There are several applications that are quite good of the Okuriyashi Barai. Uh, it's, it's one of our favorite foot techniques here. And we often do it in a linear pattern. In this case, we're working in just a nice circular pattern when the guys are moving around. So basically, if Mike's going to do it, he steps around on the side and he sweeps immediately. So he steps to his left and as Ben moves around, Mike sweeps with his left foot. Now are hit blocks, hit cuts, tight sabaki, body management. And what I'm going to have TJ do, he's going to come in and he's going to block and attack me with his left hip. And I'm just going to basic hip, hip block and cut away. So whatever grip I may have, I've got this grip, he attacks me and the cut, pop it away. I want to stop the momentum of his throw forward. So he attacks me, I'm going to attack, cut away, block away. Don't pick your foot up. Some people pick their feet up. Let's come back here, maybe get a little bit of view of us here. When he attacks, I want to make sure I block and tear away, okay? So I stop the momentum of the throw. Some people mistakenly, when it comes in, will stick their foot up. And don't do that because I got only one foot on the mat, both oh, feet on the mat. Unless I'm throwing. Yeah, right. So when he, when he attacks, he's going to cut hard, block away, okay? Could be out of any grip. He might have some grip here, and I've got this grip. If he attacks me, he cut. Stop the momentum. To me, that's one of the basic defenses we use in judo and sambo in any type of a grappling sport, especially with geese. Okay. He might have me really tied up and attack me. If I try to hop around, I'm slot, he's he'll throw me. So I don't like to hop around as much as maybe that's my second line of defense, but certainly my first line of defense is when he block the attacks, I cut and block away. If I can tear away even better, now I can come back and attack him. Or if I keep hold and he attacks, boom cut Step in front, drop under, you drop Sayanagi, some type of a counter. So that's the hit block and tear away, hit block and cut away. I think one of the basic defenses in judo, jiu-jitsu, and sambo. Thank you. Working, we're working on the hip block drill, hip and cut away drill. It's good for defense. And one guy will attack, the other guy blocks. And we're not, we're working on our hip cuts at the whole time. Just back and forth, work on defense. A lot of times we'll do, I'll do 10, you'll do 10. In this case, Kelvin and Derek are drilling. Derek's attacking and Kelvin's blocking. We want to make sure we do a hip cut, we block, maybe even tear away. This is where we really practice on our defense and good taisabaki or body management. You can see these very good hip blocks and attacks. Right side, left side, you never know what an opponent's going to throw at you. We often do them in sets of 10 each varying degrees of resistance. Sometimes we may do them in time, like 30 seconds attack and then one guy blocks the entire 30 seconds, the other guy attacks the entire 30 seconds. Right now we're just kind of working on the skills of defense. This is the hip block drill. Defense is not done enough and we need to practice it.